wants to fly away. So you can just see its tail feathers sticking out at the back there. So there's our martial eagle. It's going to fly, I think. But it's a juvenile martial. It's not a fully grown adult. It hasn't. Is it a martial or is it a juvenile fish eagle? Oh, I can't see because I can't see the head. Now it's going to defecate. There we go. And that's generally a sign of a bird flying off. Once they defecate like that, they often, it's almost like they're lightening the load before they take off. And it's quite common practice to see with birds of prey is before take off, a little defecation and then off they go. Now put your head on the other side so I can see. No, it is a, looks like a juvenile martial eagle. So this is a young one for the martial eagles. They generally have a brown back and brown head with a spotted white chest. And so this guy is still growing up. And they will get slightly larger than that. The adult martial eagles. Oh, I can't see nicely though. I don't. I'm not convinced. I need to look through my binoculars at this stage. Come on, point your head round again one more time so I can see you. There we go. Yes, it is a martial eagle. Now that I can see it properly, so a young martial eagle. And this is not uncommon for martial eagles to be around carcasses. And I wouldn't actually be surprised. Now that I think about it, martial eagles are killers of Steenbok. I have seen it before with my very own eyes on Chitwa, where a martial eagle came down. You can actually see, look how full its crop is as it flew away. It's got a massive crop, which means that it's fed quite a bit of that Steenbok. And so I have seen martial eagles do this before and they do take Steenbok quite readily. They are big powerful birds with massive talons and they're able to grab what they need. So he's sitting just over there in that tree there Seb. Where my finger is just there. Over there. Yeah. So there we go. There, that tree there. There it sits. So there we go. So that's the marshal, and hopefully it will turn a little bit and I'll be able to show you what I mean about its crop being very full. And so what they do is they'll come down and they grab these prey animals, particularly small mammals, that's what they go after, and a steenbok would be really the biggest thing that they can handle. And they'll fly down with such force that they break their backs, and then they'll sit there and feed off them. Now the martial eagle that I saw killing a steenbok managed to take it up into a tree but it was an adult this bird might have been a bit too young to be able to take it up the tree and so dragged it under that tree where it knew it wouldn't be seen by things like vultures and it could then readily feed off it without too much disturbance and once then it arrived things like tawnies and battaliers will come so Harrison you're asking if birds of prey would attack each other for control of areas um, not so much control of areas they will go after one another out of dominance over a food source so food items like what we see here the martial eagle being the largest between the battalier and the tawny look there's that crop see how full it is big bulge underneath the neck there so that's what I was talking about just now a little beak cleaning exercise so not only is its stomach full, that crop almost acts like a second stomach that is packed with meat. And as it digests, so that will then go down towards that area. So what I was saying is that they won't compete for territory. They might compete for nest sites and they might compete for food items. But other than that, not really. So you'll find it's always the biggest bird that will take over. So in the vultures, the lapid faced is normally the most dominant at a carcass, followed by the white headeds and then the cape. I mean the white-backed and then the hooded. If cape are around, they sometimes out-compete the white-headeds. And then you'll find with the birds of prey, martial eagles will out-compete everyone because they're bigger than all the others. And then you'll have crowned eagles, black eagles, or varose eagles, what they're now called, and will go all the way down until your smaller ones. So it just depends on the size of the bird that will determine how dominant it is at a food item or in, in terms of available nesting sites. Just also remember that a lot of these birds use different nesting sites. I wonder if it's going to go back to that Steenbok. It looks as though it's slowly flying back in that direction. We might sit here for a bit because wouldn't it be cool to watch this martial eagle feed in IR? If we can go there and it doesn't take over and it doesn't take off, we might be able to put our IR on and that means we don't have to affect this bird, but maybe it will go down and actually start feeding, which would be super cool because I don't think we've got any footage of birds feeding at night and it would be interesting to know if they do feed at night. I would suspect that they won't. Generally, you'll find birds, particularly birds that are not scavengers, not feeding at night, but let's try and see. We'll just definitely stick around. It's worth it. It's not something we see every day to see a large bird of prey on a small mammal carcass. So. I'm going to sit and see from here. If it takes off and goes back towards that steenbok again, 
then we'll definitely try go around and follow. It seems like it wants to. It's very restless. You look how it's watching. It's checking where that carcass is to see if it can go down towards that area. So, Blue Raptor, you're asking how big does this species of raptor get? Now, I would imagine that you're asking in terms of its um, weight. If its weight you're talking about, it can weigh just shy of 6 kilograms, so about 12 pounds, which is very heavy for a bird of prey. And in terms of its wingspan, it has a wingspan of 2.4 meters, which is between sort of 7 and 8 feet. So it's quite a large wingspan as well. And when it stands in a tree like that, um, it's just shy of a meter in terms of its tail to its head. So that's about the size of it. It is a very large bird and hugely powerful. Isn't that cool? Now I just got an update that they said that they've just heard a leopard calling on Little Gari driveway. Now, I wonder if it's if you come north towards our side. I think on the way home after this whole ordeal plays out, or Taylor maybe, might want to go and check Shabam Mupan's around Gari Main because if that leopard is mobile north, it will pop out on Gari Main in that area. And well, if it's calling, I would imagine that it will be Tingana that is on a patrol and we know how fast he can move and he'll definitely be able to get into Juma before the end of drive if it is him. Come on bird, take one more flight closer and then we'll go around back to where that carcass is. But it definitely is watching, you can see it's using that big eye that they've got just to see is there anything there, is there any hyenas, is there any jackals, anything that's got to worry about because remember even at its large size something like a hyena or a jackal would be a problem for this bird and so they just checking making sure before it approaches once more also we were just there with a car and so I don't want to disturb it any more than we have to and that's why I'm holding back from here and I'm hoping that it will then start flying towards that direction the interesting thing is I just don't know how much more meat it can fit in it's got such a large crop as it is and it seems <coughs> as though it's been a glutton bless you Seb thank you well, you're alright there bit of dust in the air I think maybe Megan says bless you as well thanks Megs So Blue Raptor, you're asking if the male and female of this, I, I suppose of this species, because, well, there's lots of different raptors that we get in South Africa, but of this particular bird, do they have different colors, the male and female? So I'm going to show you in the book quickly that no, they don't. Adults are the same coloration, and then the juveniles are slightly different. So I was talking earlier about the difference in coloration. So this is our martial eagle here. It's got this beautiful brown back normally with this crisp big yellow eye and the spotty front. So that's the adult coloration of both male and female. They look the same. And then this is what we're looking at currently, which is this sort of narrow tail bars, juvenile coloration, mottled wings, and then that whitish throat and still a little crest that what's what we're seeing on our bird over there. Now, I'm just trying to th remember which one is which, but it's either the, I think it's the female that is larger than the male. Let me just quickly read here. And the wings mainly run. Female larger than male. There we go. So the female is slightly bigger, but she's not in any way different coloration. Now, while we sit patiently with our martial eagle, it sounds like the Mara has had a few gremlins, and so they've decided to try and work those out and get them sorted because, well, it's the upcoming TV show this weekend, and so there's lots of preparation going into that. So they're going to have left us for the evening. So James sends his fondest goodbyes and hopes that you all have a lovely evening, and he's going to go and try and, I think, rest that sore head of his and hopefully be back to fighting force tomorrow and as for Taylor well Taylor's still fighting gremlins of her own so we're just going to try and see if our eagle will fly it seems as though our eagle is just taking it very easy at the moment it's not really wanting to go I think it's concerned about the light that we've got at the moment